Today, we are starting a brand new series called Half Truths. Over the next five weeks, we're going to look at some popular beliefs in culture that are half true. A half truth is a statement that conveys the truth, but only partly. They're only half true, which also means they're half false. They're kind of right, but only kind of. In leaving out the rest of the truth, it brings out a deception. The half-truth often leads us to embrace the whole lie. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be examining some of the half-truths in our culture. And this coincides over the next few weeks with some major feast days in the calendar year of our church. Feast days that celebrate major truths of our faith. For instance, today is Ascension Sunday, celebrating the truth that Jesus ascended into heaven after his earthly life. Next week is Pentecost, celebrating the truth that is the Holy Spirit. The following Sunday is Trinity Sunday, celebrating the truth that God is three persons. And then finally, Corpus Christi, celebrating the truth that Christ is really present here in our worship and in the Eucharist. All of these feast days help us to refute many of the half-truths of our culture. And actually, in several instances, we're specifically established to do just that. So we're going to be looking at some major half-truths. Half-truths like all religions are the same. All religions are the same. Half-truths like you don't need a church to connect with God. Or the ever-popular half-truth, God won't give you more than you can handle. Half-true. There are lots of facts. In fact, there are lots of half-truths. And today, we want to talk about one of them that might be the most controversial. It's the half-truth that says, it doesn't matter what you believe because there are many ways to God. Ever hear that? When people say that there are many ways to God, there are several implications here. In part, they're asserting that all the major religions have truth in them. And they're right. Many religions contain truth about the good, the true, and the beautiful, all of which are reflections of the living God. Most every major religion has something to teach us and many contain universal truths. And when they are held devoutly by people, especially when they lead people to devotion and prayer and virtue, it always should be respected by all of us. Also, when people say there are many ways to God, they usually mean that there are many ways to experience God, which is also true. You can definitely experience God in nature, through community, in prayer, together, even in music. But it is a half-truth to say that there are many ways to God. The whole truth, the real truth, is there is only one way to God. Ultimately, there is only one way to God, and that's through the person of Jesus Christ. And I know that's not a popular statement. It seems narrow-minded and even intolerant. It's especially the kind of thing that unchurched people expect us churched people to say. And yet, it's our belief. But in saying that Jesus is the only way to God, we're not saying that we are superior, but that Jesus is superior. And he has a special relationship with God because he's God's son. And that makes him the way to the Father. At one point, Jesus tells us this himself, and he's not complicated about it. Jesus simply says, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. It's his words. He didn't say, I am one way among many. He doesn't say, do it your own way, it's all good. He says, I am 
the way. There's only one way home to heaven, and that's through the person of Jesus Christ. And just to underscore this point, before his ascension, he gave his friends and followers a final charge, summing up exactly what he wanted them to do. And we heard that in today's gospel. He says, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Tell everyone the good news. Good news, of course, suggests that there is bad news. And we all know about that. The bad news is that something has gone terribly wrong in our world. There is evil. There is war and poverty and disease and civil unrest and injustice, all the result of sin and evil. And it finds its source in sin and selfishness. Sin and selfishness always present themselves as a way, as the way, but are in fact a path away from God that eventually will lead us to some form of death. We need a way, a way to live, and a way to live beyond death. And that's what every religion proposes to provide. Every major religion or faith claims that answer. They claim to know the way to salvation. And in one form or another, it always comes down to some kind of performance or an act. You know, if I live a certain way, you'll be saved. But that's not what Jesus taught. He didn't claim to know the way to salvation. He claimed to be the way to salvation. Other religions operate on the principle that I obey God and do what he says and strive to be good, that God will accept me. Well, the good news, in fact, that you and I are already accepted by God, not because of our efforts or what we've done, but because of what Jesus Christ has already done for us. The good news is that even though we are deeply flawed and we've messed up and we'll mess up again for sure, God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. The good news is that I don't have to be good enough to be accepted by God because I'm accepted in Jesus Christ. When we say that there are many ways to God, it lacks an understanding of the cross. Just think about it. If there are many ways to God, if we could be put back into a right relationship with God through some other way, then why on earth would Jesus have suffered on the cross? He was beaten and bloodied and he died so savagely on the cross. He suffered greatly to put us back into a right relationship with the Father. Why in the world would God send his son to earth to suffer like that and to show his great love for us if there was another way to the Father? Jesus laid down his life because it was the only way we could be put back in a right relationship with our Heavenly Father. The assumption about there being many ways to God is always this. It assumes that we can make our own way to God. But it doesn't take a whole lot of living to learn that however smart we are, we're not smart enough. However good we are, we're not good enough. And no matter how hard you try, we cannot save ourselves. We need a savior. And the good news is we have one, Jesus Christ. Now this might raise a question in your mind and it's a good question, it's a fair question, it's an important question. And the question is this, what about all the people who do not know Christ? What about all of those who have never had the opportunity to be introduced to him? What about those of other faith traditions, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, and peoples of other faith? Are they excluded from heaven? Are they not allowed to participate in this gift, in the gift of salvation? 
The Bible actually teaches otherwise. Scripture says, God desires everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. This is our hope. This is our faith. That's what God has willed. And we hope that his will is fulfilled, that people from all times and places and races and religions are saved. But here's the point. They're saved in Christ. Whether they know it or not, whether they know him or not, they're saved in Christ. And one day, somehow, they'll know that. There's only one way to God, and that is through the person of Jesus Christ. Now let me tell you why that matters to you this morning. First of all, it matters because until you really believe that Jesus is your way back to God, that he is your only hope to be healed and to be made whole, your faith will only be a category. One of the many things in your life alongside family, work, sports, and whatever's on TV. But understanding that he is the way for you introduces you into a relationship. And then it becomes personal. Secondly, this matters because when we understand that there is only one way back to God, it's going to fire us up. It's going to intensify our commitment to connect our friends, our family members, and our coworkers to the person of Jesus Christ. If there are many ways to God, it's perfectly okay if they go their own way. But if Jesus is the way back to God, well, it just makes sense to share that information. If you had discovered a cure for cancer, you wouldn't feel arrogant or embarrassed in sharing that with other people. If you've got a better way to live in Christ, why would you not share that information? Anyway, in the week ahead, try this exercise. Every day, as a part of your quiet time or some other time in the day, just say this. Say, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. In fact, let's try that together. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. For some of you, it will be the first time you've ever confessed that. And it will make a change in your relationship with God. You will pray that this week, and it will be a breakthrough in your relationship with God. And if you already believe that, then I want you to pray this prayer for someone else this week who does not know Jesus Christ. Pray that God will use you to bring them into a relationship with him, into the full truth of his deep love for them and his deep love for you. The Feast of the Ascension beautifully, perfectly, and wonderfully sums up this truth. Christ is the way and the only way to the Father. In saying that, we're not saying that we're superior to anyone else. We're just saying that he is superior to us. May God bless you.